there were a number of, art, obviously, articles written at the time of his death. But I think the most poignant one was that part of the headline was, friend to all. I think the first word that would come to me is kind. Not only was he competitive and um, funny, but he was also just super uh, social and loved to uh, be around people, connect with people. He had a unique characteristic where people were kind of drawn to him. So they looked up to him physically, and then they also looked up to him as a young man. He was like my protector. He was 10 years older than us. So like we both idolized him. Whenever he came home, I like was counting down the days until he came home. Like he was just so friendly all the time and would he would be able to talk to any person for like hours. Kyle and I were very close, uh, coached him even before high school. So all through high school, uh, as well as when he was younger, um, he was best friends with my older son. So he was actually like a son to me. Kyle was one of those people that like, as soon as they walk in the room, you know, like they have the uh, opportunity to put a smile on everyone's face. And I think he was just a really good dude all around. He always knew uh, what was cool, whether it was music, um, or sports or what to wear. He was always the, uh, the cool cat. He was one of those guys that like kind of taught me how to do things. Like he taught me how to play hockey. He taught me how to skate. Hockey was one of those things that like when Wolf came home for the, uh, for the holidays, like we would always go skate. We would always go to stick and puck. So yeah, he was like my brother, but I think on another note, it was like, I looked up to him more than anything. He was just uber competitive in general. Um, he really, really did not like to, uh, to lose, whether it was uh, sports or um, uh, video games, game of uh, cards, anything really. Uh, whenever great quarterbacks' names are brought up, uh, his name is always in the conversation with me as being one of our all-time great quarterbacks and a great young man in Kenston Middle School. Greg is my son who played as well with Kyle. They were line mates. Colton Dieter, I have to mention because Colton was part of our three, uh, the, the three guys on that line, and they were they were probably one of the best lines in Cleveland hockey history, to tell you the truth. And um, I'd say I, I say that just because I, I read it in the News Herald, who was in a great class of guys. They stayed tight forever. Some great Kenston families, uh, a wonderful bunch of kids. And uh, Wolfie was the leader of that group. I, di I did the drills, but Kyle managed the people and, and the players on, on there. And if things weren't going how, how they should have been, which is usually with a, a very productive hockey drill, um, Kyle let them know in no uncertain terms. And has some unbelievable memories with him. Uh, he and the guys went down to Chicago on an all-time favorite guy at Kenson ever, uh, Mr. Cartley's birthday. Will Fogarty blocks a punt. Will takes us into the end zone and wins the ball game. So uh, those kinds of things were all just a part, just common, common nature with these guys from that class. And uh, Wolfie was the leader of that group. Kai was our ultimate penalty killer. And you have to play three, three players against five. Not real easy in, in hockey. And generally, the other team scores pretty quickly. Um, I used to send Kyle out there. Why? He's 6'5". He had a big frame. Um, he could cover a lot of ice, but he also had the agility and Kyle took it upon himself. Wanted to be out there, um, intense, and uh, he's probably the only person that I know has scored two goals on one penalty kill, at five on three. Uh, I've never seen that, I've never seen it in the pros, I've never seen that in college, I've never seen it uh, in high school. Yeah, I mean, I think Kyle, Kyle is, is kind of the epitome of a Kinston athlete um, that uh, just loves the school and, and uh, was able to uh, put that into the sport, um, but translate that into uh, in, in the, in the uh, future for him uh, into the military. The, the military thing was kind of interesting. I remember that as a boy, he had found my, my dog tags and used to wear them around and things like that. Play army in the back like all kids do. In terms of the way the world of sports works, it would be a natural fit to him to move into something like that. That's physically demanding, requires leadership, requires uh, skill and intelligence. Those were things that he had all those kind of characteristics built into him already. So he was a guy that I'm sure they loved in the military. I was not surprised when he said he was going to go into the military. It was just perfect. I'm sure if you talk to his friends uh, in the military, which I have, um, he was Kyle and he was he was bringing that leadership to the military as well. Perfect fit. You know, he transferred a couple times in college, actually three colleges. He had kind of bounced around 
between Catholic University, Valparaiso, Kent State. He knew whatever degree he was pursuing, this uh, wasn't going to be what he wanted long term. He never finished at Kent. He had like a few more credits and my mom was like, no, just finish it out and then go there. He's like, no, like this is what I want to do. He said, mom, I've changed majors three times. Um, I have not found what I really want to do. He was a good student. This is not a kid who was barely getting through. He had a good GPA. He was doing fine. He just couldn't find something that lit that fire underneath him, right? And this was it. At that point, he looked at the Marine Corps as uh, um, a different path that you know, didn't uh, force him to follow uh, you know, what most people were doing. And he came home and he said, I'm joining the Marines. But of all the services to pick, you're gonna pick the Marine Corps, right? I was, I, I was trying to talk him out of it, but he was, uh, he was all in on the Marine Corps. And, um, and th there was gonna be no stopping him. And then became uh, this interesting transition where he qualified for virtually everything he applied for. And then he, he then, I remember he called me, he goes, Mom, did you know I'm colorblind? And it, I said, well, you're not fully colorblind. Fully colorblind, colorblind. it's, like it's this, this red, green, red thing. green thing. And, and then what happened as a result of that is that then he had qualified for everything, but and now he sudden, qualified for virtually nothing. All of a sudden, it took a lot of things off the table. He would have wanted to go immediately into reconnaissance or intelligence. He, he was looking to be a, a special forces guy, I think, from the beginning. So he, he winds up in supply. he he gone to the bottom now. He befriended a, um, a local uh, Kenston graduate who's a Green Beret. Um, and they got to talking and he encouraged him to look into the um, Marine Corps Special Operations Command, their elite force called the Marsoc Raiders. And that is a different deal. You can't just go in the Corps and apply for that. You have to be in for a particular years, have reached a particular rank, and you can bypass this particular particular color blindness as part of that deal. He met a number of the Raiders, the very elite, and he just said, they listen, this is a whole different group of guys. The, the, everything they do, the way they carry themselves, their training, everything, he goes, I want to be part of that. He could go out, he felt like he was actually doing something in terms of protecting our country. And I think the fact that he was on like the same level, as you say, a SEAL or you know, all these other special uh, special forces. I think that was really cool to him. Um, and I think that was like the things that those guys do is something that I think he kind of dreamed of his whole life. The odds of getting into this are like slim. The odds of getting through it are just, you know, I'm, I'm reading this, it's just like the dropout rates are incredible. Yeah. A couple of the guys I think joked about it. Like this guy's coming through supply and he's gonna get into MARSOC? You know, like who does he think he is? They, you know? He quickly earned their respect and he right. said became one of the right. leaders. You know, obviously Kyle, his size was formidable. He was 6'4", he was fast, he was smart. I mean, you're, you're not a quarterback or a captain on your hockey team if you're not, you're leading others. So to some in some respects, he might have been really cut out for this, and it turns out he was. It's one thing to be an athlete, top athlete in your high school. It's another thing to be a military athlete, and it's more than athleticism. But they are. They are truly like yeah, military I mean, athletes. They're like the top of the top in so many ways. But they're such a psychological factor. We were privileged to go down uh, at the time of his passing, and we were given a private tour of their training facility. Right. Okay? When you walk through there and say, wait a minute, they were actually living in these conditions and I goes yeah this is all on purpose yeah. all of it it's simulating okay? we're gonna life. make this as miserable as we can make it it's a brutal nine-month course and he made it through you know one of the select 38 of them I think made it through the, the process end, right. in the end and I think nothing made him more proud to be part of of, yeah. of that particular unit those particular people mr. speaker I rise today to honor the life and service of U.S. Marine Sergeant Wolfgang K. Winninger. Marine Sergeant Winninger died tragically Tuesday during an airborne parachute training at a military facility in Georgia. But tragically, Marine Sergeant Kyle Wolf Winninger 
lost his life Tuesday during a training jump. A Northeast Ohio Marine killed in a tragic training accident one week ago. The Kenston High School graduate had completed training for the U.S. Marine Forces Special Operations Command and was set to graduate paratrooper training Friday. His family, his mom and dad say, after much searching, their son had finally found his place serving our country. But instead of graduation, his dad and his mom are grieving his death. It's certainly been a roller coaster. Um, you go through probably every emotion you can imagine from start to finish. He was humble, he was sensitive, but he was incredibly proud personally of that accomplishment and to be part of this incredible elite unit. This is something that is so hard and so deep and so unknown that I, ju I just don't even know how to express how much I'm going to miss him. At the time of his passing, it was the uh, middle of COVID. Okay, oh, yeah. we were all masking and stuff. So, yeah. Some of the people that showed up at the wake, I mean, these were grade school coaches, teammates, oh, well, families. How about, how about the head coach of the football team brings the entire fo current football team? Coach Grubich brought the entire. Don't forget, he Kenston. graduated 10 years or 12 yeah. years or whatever it was prior Brought the to. entire varsity team to the wake. Then David Joyce, Congressman. Uh, David Joyce from um, Congressional 14 uh, spoke eloquently on, in Congress. Uh, Governor DeWine ordered all the flags at all the state buildings at half staff until the time of his funeral. Oh, there was the incredible. arrangement of a, an entire motorcade uh, from the airport to the funeral home with, with uh, the, the motorcycle riders that honor veterans, the, the police escort motorcycle all the way through. The retirement um, of the Jersey. Yeah, the uh, Kenston Board of Education and Nancy Santilli and Tom Gabram and those who were running that and and I was I was stunned by that I mean hockey was his sports passion yeah. right but to have that honor bestowed on him and that jersey hanging there that when we retired that the Kenston players didn't know Kyle they really I mean it was it was years after that so um, they really dedicated themselves, and that was a difficult game they were playing. Um, they were not expected to win. The other team was undefeated. Um, and wouldn't you know it, they rallied around Kyle. Um, I did talk to them in the locker room um, uh, and told them about Kyle. I showed them pictures, um, just told them just kind of who he was, what he was, and how he represented Kenston. They dedicated that game. I didn't know that until after the game, and they came off the ice. They were so fired up about the win. Um, and they pretty much said this was for Kyle. So um, it was just significant and emotional let's put it that way yeah, i think it's a really touching tribute that you know he uh he was able to touch those people even without even uh ever physically being in front of them i remember driving by the pond and they have that large sign out there yeah and it but, says well, the, the, the marquee the marquee said, said we remember you know yeah, he, wingman he, mvp i right. was just moved to tears right or like his family members his friends his coaches like i think it was also honoring like us and them. It's emotional, really, and it's still, I see it every day. I mean, I, 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 play, I play as well as coach, but um, every time I'm at that rink, I, I get to look at it, which is a, just a, a proud thing for me to look at. To think that there's never going to be another number four on the ice is just, um, I don't know, at the time it was one thing, but now you think about it and it's, it's very meaningful. He picked the number four and like, it was always like my mom kind of made it like, oh, she has four kids. So like, it was kind of the family number but basically like we had that number because of him like drew had it and then we both had it in our sports uh for the rest of us we all wore it because he wore it i really like the fact that like you know i put on four and people knew me as kyle's uh little brother that was really um you know i enjoyed that so um as soon as i had the opportunity to wear it or like if i you know if that jersey wasn't taken i was putting it putting it on and it was like i have a necklace of four like it's one of my favorite things like it's just like that's always the number and like i don't know it's like weird things to say like i always look at the clock and it's four 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 or something like that like it's just like i always see signs of fours and that's like definitely what i include with kyle were uh, about seven months ago, David Joyce called me and I went down to meet him in his office 
talking, you've seen some of the highways and stuff named after um, to see. So then he said, I thought about that, but I thought about something bigger. And I said, I'm listening is the renaming of a federal building, which is a post office. And in order to even be introduced, you have to get the buy-in and the okay of any particular state, of every congressman, regardless of your political affiliation and senators, to say, I agree. And with all of that, it gets introduced to the entire Congress of the United States for introduction and then approval. And then once that's approved, uh, that federal post office in Chesterland at 306 in Mayfield will be named in his honor. So it was very meaningful that, that somehow it wound up being Chesterland because not only was I raised there and went to high school there. But when we did Kyle services, we chose to go back to my home church, which is in Chesterland. Um, and my brother and sister and their kids all reside there and that's their post office. My dad was a World War II vet, so um, I put the flag out every morning in, in support of Kyle and, and my dad. Boy, it's just exciting to know that he did find himself. That was his purpose. Um, and and um, somewhere where he can apply those leadership skills and all of his strengths that he had um, uh, was was perfect for the military. It really was. When I hear his name, when I think of accolades that he's received, and obviously his untimely death, all these crazy things that have happened in his life, it's a very proud moment for me to see him uh, rise to the greatest heights. He was proud to be a Marine. Yep, he he was, was proud to be a Raider. He was proud to be part of the armed services. He was proud to represent this country. Yep. It gave him enormous pride. You know, he, he was a role model to not just myself, but I feel like he was a role model to also the, uh, the friends that he had that were his own age. And I feel like that's a really rare thing to uh, accomplish or even have in your life. He was this physically big guy. He's got the, the name Wolf. He was a Marine Raider. I think he's like this really, or probably was this really like hardened soul who was uh, tough and he was, but also he was just very compassionate also. And he really like cared about other people. Um, a lot, whether it's you know people in his unit in the Marine Corps or people on his team um, or in his family, like he really, really deeply uh, cared about other people. And I feel like that was kind of like the happiest I've seen him. He like went into the military, like he met so many good people. That was definitely like what he wanted to do. He always like talked about it. I think he chose the Marine Corps because he knew it wasn't going to be easy. He also chose to go in as every other guy. He, he didn't want to go in and already have some uh, elite status, elite status yeah. and have somebody report to him. He wanted to he wanted to do it from the from the ground up. And he did. I think it's important to consider what service to the nation means. For those that choose that path, it's not a decision to be taken lightly the training, the preparation to become a warrior and a member of a team who have shared values and goals to be the best that they can be is a big commitment. But even larger than that is that they take an oath to defend our country against all enemies, foreign and domestic, who threaten our way of life and those that we help, who we are aligned with, to help protect their democracies. In our history, with the exception of the Civil War, almost 700,000 American soldiers, sailors, and airmen have given their last full measure in defense of that oath. As has often been said, freedom isn't free. And for all those that we honor, they paid the price and sacrificed their lives to ensure that freedom. On Kyle's tombstone at All Soul Cemetery is written an epitaph that was inspired by the ancient Greeks to their fallen at the Battle of Thermopylae. And it was their leader who spoke to the messenger and I think these few words serve all of those that we remember on this day. It reads, when you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today.